Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather celebrating God's love for us. Always he keeps us and calls us deeper and deeper into his love. But let's be honest. The times when we do not respond in love, we do not love, we do not serve as we should. We ask the Lord now to forgive us, to heal our sins, and to bring us always back into his new and risen life. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord of God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. In those days, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding, on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it facing the square, before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of men and women and all who could understand. And the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden pulpit, which they had made for the purpose. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Ezra and the Levites read from the book from the law of God clearly. And they gave the sense, so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, 
who taught the people, said to the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The decrees of the Lord are steadfast. They give wisdom to the simple. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, abiding forever. The judgments of the Lord are truth. They are, all of them, just. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. May the words of my mouth, the thoughts of my heart, win favor in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things which have been accomplished among us, just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the truth concerning the things of which you have been informed. At that time, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and a report concerning him went out through all the surrounding country, and he taught in all their synagogues being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And he went to the synagogue, as was his custom, on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. And there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. 
the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. They began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To the relief of many parents, school has finally started. In many parishes, our catechetical programs are up and running. Catechism is an important part of what we, as a faith community, do. Through catechism, we pass on to our children the traditions of our community. We help them grow up, understanding their faith and also deepening their relationship with God. And so catechesis, when it's done well, has a profound effect upon the community. Just take that first reading of the prophet Nehemiah. For generations, the books of the law had been lost. The people of Israel had forgotten about God and what it meant to be in relationship with him. Ezra found the books of the law, and in the temple, he began reading them out to the people, translating them and applying them. The people were moved to tears. It was the books of the law that told the people who they were and how they were to relate to each other and to God. It was the word of God that gave them an identity, the word of God that formed them into a community. And so they wept for for joy, for joy that they had rediscovered who they were. They also wept in sorrow because for so long they'd forgotten who they were. A few years ago, the Catholic bishops of Southern Africa released a document which explained what catechesis really is. And in this document, they say that catechesis is a lifelong journey of conversion and faith. Based on scripture and tradition, nourished by liturgy and prayer, that it forms believers for discipleship. It involves the whole community. It's not simply the responsibility of a few. It means the entire community is called to be involved in this process. And that means it's a service performed jointly by bishops and priests, deacons, religious, and laity. It's a rather comprehensive description. This description tells us that catechesis isn't just something which happens in a classroom. Properly understood, catechesis is about faith formation at all stages of one's life, and it involves every single aspect of your life, not simply an intellectual formation for sacramental preparation. In Luke's Gospel, we see Jesus taking part in catechesis. He reads from the Scriptures. Then he teaches the people some profound truth. What he teaches is directed towards praxis and mission. And what I mean by that is that Jesus told people how to live their lives, not to practice their faith. And he then quotes the prophet Isaiah to, to teach his followers, those who were in the audience, exactly what the mission of a follower of God is. And it's to bring good news to the poor, new sight to the blind, and to set the downtrodden free. As our bishops point out in their description of catechesis, catechesis is based on scripture and tradition and forms people for discipleship. And this is exactly what we see Jesus doing in the scriptures today. 
before you start thinking that catechesis is only meant for children, it reminds you that the bishops say catechesis is meant for all of us. Each and every one of us participate in it. We teach and we learn from one another. In our parishes, it's done in formal catechism classes and the RCA program. It might be done in your own parish by faith development lectures presented. Maybe it's done through your Alpha program. You're going to find it in the reflection page written by the Jesuit Institute and many other programs that the Institute puts on. We do it here in our liturgy, in our prayer, and in our teaching. We do it through the example of how we treat one another, how we speak to and about each other. We do it by living the great command to love, which our Savior gave us. And this isn't just the mission of catechists who will be shortly commissioned in our parishes. It is our mission, the mission of each and every one of us. We now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers and the needs of our community to the Lord. God created us to live and grow in love. By being stewards of God's gifts, we take an active part in bringing this vision of life into being. Confident in the power of prayer to transform us, we now speak out our needs. For the church. May it grow stronger in its resolve to welcome and embrace those who are living on the margins of society. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may their first concern be to preserve and foster peace through compassionate policies and just systems. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from physical and mental illness, may they be healed through God's infinite mercy and be comforted by those who care for them. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, may they grow stronger in their love and commitment to one another. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechists, may they be blessed with creativity and enthusiasm as stewards of God's gifts. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, for a moment, let's reflect on our own needs and bring those in our hearts to the Lord.
Lord our God, hear our prayers today. Those we've spoken out loud and those that we have prayed in the silence of our hearts. For we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. This is the Lord forever. Now the meaning of this water and wine, may we come to show him the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to show him our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. This is our prayer. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. And pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And that we will accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our own good and for all our holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer, he always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. For the Son and the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the Son and the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, presence in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And as he once did for the disciples, so he now does for us. He opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and then gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. 
Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this, this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis our Pope, with Butitlachale our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, with the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, just as Christ did and as he commands us to do. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our own earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, with St. Ignatius of Loyola, and with all the saints, you shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, for it is through him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, Keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace and give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.